So in the UK, I think it's fair to say most of our ruling conservative class are made up of hedge fund managers and bankers with a lot of aristocracy. But in light of the recent, I guess, but in light of the recent news that J.D. Vance is going to be the vice president nominee for the Republican Party, it seems to be in America, Silicon Valley are increasingly becoming the rulers of conservative politics. Now, if you're old enough, you'll probably remember that Silicon Valley billionaires, entrepreneurs, all that garbage, they have had a reputation for maybe being a bit more liberal and left-wing. Of course, that's never true, but they have supported the Democrats in the past. Elon Musk, he has supported the Democrats. Bill Gates has supported the Democrats. And they've been chummy with people like Barack Obama. There was lots of people in Silicon Valley who invested in his campaign. And if you have a long enough memory, you'll remember that conservatives used to hate Elon Musk for pushing more climate change friendly policies, including even promoting, of course, his electric car. Fast forward to 2024 and no one is under any illusions that most people who work in Silicon Valley at the higher level are at the very least right-leaning libertarians and as we're seeing now a lot of them are just like straight up fascists. Now there is a more detailed video to be made on this topic but I just want to give maybe a broader overview about the ideology driving these people because it seems to be a mixture of technocracy which I'm going to talk about which Elon Musk's own fascist granddad was actually involved in back in the 1930s and also basically wanting a future envisioned by the philosophy of Ayn Rand. Now, you can see how a lot of these people who claim that Atlas Shrugged is one of their favourite books, they can see themselves in the heroes of that book. It's fair to say their political leanings are driven by the deregulation of things like safety standards in various industries, so there's no accountability in their push for the future where they can basically break all morals or all laws. And a good example of this recently is Elon Musk cozying up with Ron DeSantis. Remember when DeSantis disastrously launched his um, campaign for president on Twitter? Only for DeSantis to later sign a law, I think it's with SpaceX, where Elon Musk wouldn't be accountable if there was safety violations in his company, like he couldn't be personally held accountable and there you have a direct exchange between two powerful people where essentially Elon Musk has bribed the local government so he can't get in trouble. And all of these people have a very high opinion of themselves and a lot of them believe they are driving humanity into the future, especially people like Elon Musk. And because we have a technocracy element, they firmly believe they should be the rulers of our society. And in many ways they are. I just want to talk about all of this today. And one small side note, we are going to be talking about Elon Musk a bit, maybe not too in depth, but I'm going to be talking about his ideology in reference to like technocracy and Ayn Rand. The problem is, I've said this in other videos, the more I read the Dune series, I'm pretty convinced Elon Musk's philosophy is actually based on Leto Atreides II. And I think I'm going to make a whole video about that because I've made videos about why he's so obsessed with people having children and breeding. And although that seems to be some messed up kink, at the same time, I'm starting to think of it more in the context of the Dune books and the breeding program in that and the eugenics involved in the series. But I'm going to save that for another video. So before we go any further, follow me on social media, the creations of all these tech geniuses so check out my instagram my personal and my travel instagram and if you want to support my work please check out my patreon page i'm trying to build up as many one to three dollar patrons as possible benefits include early access to videos that you can watch ad free on the patreon page itself and also access to the discord server with all of that out the way let's get into the video so although i've wanted to make this video for a while it is a timely time to make it because of jd vance being the nominee for vice president on the republican side so wired writing elon musk among tech heavyweights to rally behind jd vance vp pick republican figureheads from silicon valley are rallying behind trump 
and Vance as his running mate. Top Silicon Valley leaders like Musk came out in support of him as Trump's vice president in the hours after the official announcement was made on Monday. Musk said that the Trump-Vance ticket resounds with victory and called it an excellent decision by Trump. David Sachs, a prominent GOP donor and venture capitalist, wrote on Twitter, This is who I want by Trump's side, an American patriot. Musk, Sachs, and former Fox News host Tucker Carlson all lobbied Trump over the weekend to choose Vance according to Axios. The tech industry's excitement over Vance comes as a little surprise. A venture capitalist himself has worked alongside major investors like Peter Thiel and AOL founder Steve Case. When Vance ran for US Senate in 2022, Thiel donated $15 million to support his campaign and Sachs also donated $900,000 during the Senate election. So just on a little bit of his background, so after graduating from Yale Law School in 2013, he spent time living in San Francisco where he worked at Mithril Capital. That firm was co-founded by Peter Thiel, the former PayPal CEO, who has long been a major giver to Republicans. And of course, Peter Thiel and Elon Musk both started PayPal together. So Vance also spent time in Washington, where he worked for AOL CEO Steve Case's venture capital firm Revolution LLC on a project to expand capital opportunities to towns like Middleton, Ohio, where Vance was born. Vance and Sachs helped orchestrate a recent Silicon Valley fundraiser for Trump. The event was at Sachs's home and marked Trump's first visit to San Francisco in years. So of course this guy is firmly in bed with the top players in Silicon Valley. Of course Peter Thiel is the most important in there, but Elon Musk is also buddies with him. And Elon Musk of course explicitly came out in support of Trump and has said he has set up a pack I think it's going to be worth like $45 million to help get Trump elected president. And of course, do these guys all necessarily agree with Trump's ideology, whatever that really is? Or do they agree with the evangelical base in the Republican Party? I'm guessing no. What do they see Trump as? A vassal for tax cuts and a vassal for deregulation and making it easier for venture capitalists and tech bros to get in good with the US government and hopefully deregulate their industries to make them less accountable to things like unions or safety regulations, which to them, if they believe their own hype and bullshit, will accelerate their own projects. So yeah, the Trump pick to me doesn't seem based on a massively shared ideology. It's just their libertarian politics which is making them support far-right candidates. I mean, I don't doubt people like Peter Thiel and Elon Musk have a lot of fascist politics themselves, but I think this support for Trump is pretty much just transactional. Like most things in American politics, right? Like most of these rich people, it doesn't really matter what they believe. They just support the candidate that will benefit them the most. But the dangerous thing is, a lot of Silicon Valley bros really think very highly of themselves and think highly of their role in the world. And I find it funny how much the context has changed in that they used to have some sort of respect as geniuses. Like if we think back to 2010's The Social Network by David Fincher and written by Aaron Sorkin, of course, at the time, people were saying this is a very like unflattering portrayal of Mark Zuckerberg, but I actually think it's, in hindsight, a very flattering portrayal of him, and I think it's a more positive portrayal, because through the film, you put yourself in his shoes, and he seems like this like super smart guy who wanted to do something interesting, right? Not like this massive creep who's only got even worse as time has gone on, and, I hopefully, and hopefully if I make another film, it will make him out clearly to be the villain, which I don't think it went hard enough on in that movie. But also since then, and since the late 2010s, we have had more like villains and people destroying the world who have been inspired by these tech bros. I think of like the Watch Dogs games, all three of them for having this influence. But I guess the one that sticks out the most, because it literally is set in San Francisco, part of it at least, is the Horizon games and Horizon Forbidden West, where you actually, you know, go to the ruins of San Francisco. And I won't spoil the game, but let's just say in the past, which sets up this post-post-apocalyptic world of the Horizon games, yeah, the bad guy is someone from Silicon Valley, which you could easily see people like Elon Musk in. And one of the bad guys in the DLC, played by Sam Witwer, 
another character you can see Elon Musk and just tech bros influence in. So it's safe to say the climate has changed in that regard and that we don't see these people as geniuses trying to advance humanity for the benefit of all of us by inventing social media. We see them for what they are, like power hungry people basically just trying to exploit us for money and satiate their own egos and maybe with some grand designs on society which are inherently like fascistic and one of them in my opinion is technocracy and something called the technate now i actually had an argument with someone before about this ideology because they were saying i had it all wrong it's like a left-leaning ideology and you can see how there are like left-leaning parts of it but being like ruled over by like entrepreneurs and inventors i don't think sounds very good in my opinion especially when you see a lot of these people like elon musk in society and i think elon musk's granddad's involvement in this movement says everything and we can kind of see the influence with a lot of silicon valley in my opinion so an article by cbc in science we trust by Ira Bassin. So on October 13th, 1940, a Regina chiropractor named Joshua Haldeman appeared in a city court to face two charges under the Defense of Canada Act. His alleged offense was belonging to Technocracy Incorporated, an organization that had been banned by the Canadian government several months earlier as part of a larger sweep of groups it considered subversive to the war effort. Technocracy Incorporated was not a political movement, in fact, politicians or members of political parties were not allowed to join. It was founded in New York in 1933 as an educational and research organization, promoting a radical restructuring of political, social, and economic life in Canada and the US, with science as its central operating principle. There would be no politicians, business people, money, or income inequality. Those were all features of what technocracy called the price system, and it would have to go, there were no countries called Canada or the US either, just one giant continental landmass called the Technate, a techno-utopia run by engineers and other experts in their fields. In the Technate, everyone would be well housed and fed, all material needs would be taken care of, whether you had a job or not. Joshua Haldeman was leader of Technocracy Incorporated from 1936 to 41 in Canada, but left to go to South Africa soon after. In 1971, his daughter Maeve gave birth to his first grandson. His name was Elon Musk. Now, if you want a good insight into what this man was like, Haldeman was a staunch anti-communist from Canada. In 1950, he decided to move to South Africa, which was still ruled by the white apartheid regime. As it had been established in 1948, the regime was soon recruiting white settlers from North America, promising restless men such as Haldeman that they could live like princes. In 1960, Haldeman self-published a tract, The International Conspiracy to Establish a World Dictatorship and the Menace to South Africa, that blamed the two world wars on the machinations of, of Jewish financiers. So I say that just to explain to you the types of people this attracted. Elon Musk's granddad, massive anti-communist, massive anti-Semite, massive fascist who moved to an apartheid state to enjoy the benefits of being a white settler. And these are the guys involved in a movement that wanted to reshape society where inventors and experts and scientists ran everything in essentially an authoritarian structure where you would have your material needs met, which might sound good to people. It seems like a dictatorship of the inventor class. You'd imagine people who make things like social media believe they're part of this today and i'm not saying they all believe in this themselves but it's clear there is some sort of influence in this way of thinking i actually think technocracy could be a good influence for like a new bioshock game because it does give me very similar vibes to ayn rand who of course inspired the first bioshock game with her writings now just the final say on the technocracy and the technate stuff a lot of people who invent things think you know it's all down to their individual brilliance like they're not building on the blocks that were established by humans over like millennia everyone who created the theory behind it or created the technology they use no it's down to their individual brilliance and people believing in that themselves are not the types of people you want to rule a society because firstly they think everyone is inferior to them and they think everything they've achieved is totally just like down to their individual brilliance and it's a very like individualist look at this stuff and this class of people ruling over us 
is of course not beneficial to anyone, even if they do take care of your material needs, as this ideology states it wants to. Seriously imagine Silicon Valley like ruling the entirety of the United States, like just as an authoritarian government. Because that's what a lot of these people actually want. Thankfully, we live in a better system where you can just um like buy the government instead. I think that's better. But even though they're not explicitly influenced by the technate. They are explicitly Randian cultists. Now, quick summary, I don't want to go into it because I think like most people know who Ayn Rand was, but Ayn Rand was an author of fiction, philosopher, and she basically mainstreamed something called objectivism or objectivist capitalism. And the most accurate way to describe it is it's an extremist form of individualist capitalism. And morality in the world is based on maximizing profit. Ayn Rand famously said that the natives in America deserved everything that was done to them because they were not using the land to generate profit. So I think that quote shows you how Ayn Rand's ideology leads to things like fascism. But you can also see why Silicon Valley billionaires and just rich people, why they like Ayn Rand. Because... In her work, she often talks about the virtue of the individualist entrepreneur. Atlas Shrugged is about a group of these people withdrawing from society, deciding we want no part of this society that leeches off our brilliance, and they enter a retreat while society basically devolves into chaos because we need the business class, we need John Galt, we need these great rich entrepreneurs to steer us into a better future. So no wonder like most Silicon Valley people love this book, even though I don't even understand how people like Ayn Rand's writing because I think it's pretty terrible, despite the message being stupid as well. So an article by Metro Silicon Valley about Ayn Rand said, Steve Jobs, Peter Thiel and Uber founder Travis Kalanick have all paid homage to Rand on the occasion of Steve Jobs' resignation from Apple. Steve Wozniak told Bloomberg that he remembered Jobs as a young man he was reading a lot of books. I think Atlas Shrugged might have been one of them back then. So Ayn Rand has also had a massive influence generally on American politics. Got an article covering her. So um, her most significant early follower was Alan Greenspan, later to serve as a chairman of the Federal Reserve for 19 years. In the 1950s, Greenspan was one of the collective and would be among the mourners at her funeral. Greenspan is the link between the original Rand cult and what we think of as the second age of Rand, the Thatcher-Reagan years, when the laissez-faire free market philosophy went from the crankish obsession of right-wing economists to the governing credo of Anglo-American capitalism, Greenspan appointed as the US central banker by Ronald Reagan in 1987, firmly believed that market forces unimpeded were the best mechanisms for the management and distribution of a society's resources. That view rested on the assumption that economic actors behave rationally, always acting in their own self-interest. The primacy of self-interest rather than altruism or any other non-material motive was, of course, a central tenet of Randian thoughts. So what we're seeing now, I guess, is the third age of Rand cultists. So you had this 1980s Gordon Gecko greed is good, just running throughout Western society and basically destroying Western welfare states, Western like nationalization of industries, and actually destroying the government's role in serving the people instead of completely serving capital. Because what you saw with Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher was the selling off of national industries and also destroying unions, which both did in the UK. Margaret Thatcher essentially started destroying public housing, never recovered. Most of the problems of our day are in the UK and the US are caused by Ronald Reagan and his acolytes and Margaret Thatcher. And not surprising that so many of them were Randy and cultists. And now we have the people who founded Uber, Twitter, the guy who founded Apple, the guy who founded Facebook, Donald Trump, allegedly, people like Paul Ryan, people who ran the Federal Reserve. All of these people are followers of Ayn Rand's philosophy. And if we combine that with like the technocracy, what you're basically seeing is some sort of like techno fascism. And like I said, Ayn Rand wouldn't call herself a fascist. Ayn Rand doesn't love the state. 
Ayn Rand didn't love any state programs despite dying on welfare and growing up in the USSR. So fascism doesn't always look like the same thing, right? So we imagine fascism when I say it of like 1930s um, Germany or Italy or Spain or something, right? But you could say that India is becoming a fascist state and that's fascism existing within a democracy. And you could easily argue that the US is well on its way to becoming a fascist state and these people guided by Randian objectivism and guided by things like technocracy, they are buying US democracy for Silicon Valley. And they believe that is the quickest way for them to rule over us even more than they do. It doesn't matter that Mark Zuckerberg basically nearly has a monopoly on social media, apart from like one or two holdouts. And also in that as well, although Trump has said he doesn't want to ban TikTok, part of the TikTok ban is that TikTok sells it to a US company, right? JD Vance is firmly in bed with people like Elon Musk, who owns a social media platform. I wonder what's going to happen there. Is a group of American investors going to buy TikTok for the US with the help of Donald Trump? Yeah, that seems like that's what's going to happen. And basically, Donald Trump is going to serve the rich as president, but you're going to see more than usual a Republican government serving the interests of Silicon Valley, which has usually been pigeonholed as a Democrat thing or a more left-leaning thing, when it has always been a libertarian thing. In my opinion, conservative libertarianism pretty much always leads to fascism and this creation of a free market system that basically destroys the government's role as something serving the people, destroys things like Medicare and Medicaid, destroys things like public housing and the NHS, and basically takes away any safety nets you have to make you, even more than you are, a complete slave to the market. And social media is already garbage for the human race, but it's a scarier thought that now these people will be even more in control of the US government, have less accountability from the government for safety violations, privacy violations, treating their workers like garbage, being able to rule over their companies like a king, like Elon Musk does with Tesla, SpaceX, and Twitter. So yeah, this is a bad thing for the world. It's a bad thing for America. And these libertarian fascists in Silicon Valley are firmly intent on achieving their bizarre aims, whatever they are, and they will destroy the planet to do so because they really don't give a shit that's why they have plans either to colonise Mars in the far future or setting up massive bunkers in places like New Zealand because they know things like climate change are going to make the Earth a harder place to live. And you might as well plunder the US government and North America now so you can have the resources to run off into obscurity later when the whole world falls apart. So that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.